than anything in all of human history. Now, because of our enormous per capita consumption of resources, we can say with confidence the world's worst population growth problem is right here in the United States. But you hear all sorts of well-meaning people pointing to distant underdeveloped nations and saying they're the problem with overpopulation. A, the average person in the United States in a lifetime will consume something like maybe 30 times the amount of resources that'll be consumed by a person in a lifetime in an underdeveloped nation. We are the problem. We have the responsibility and we have the authority to deal with the problem here as a domestic problem in the United States. And some years ago, speaking here on the campus of the University of Colorado, our United States Senator Tim Wirth said that the best thing we can do to help other countries stop their population growth is for us to set an example and stop our own population growth here in the U.S. We have sent representatives to international conferences to tell the underdeveloped nations, you're the problem, you've got to stop your population growth. And they just laugh and say, look, you're the problem with all of your high per capita consumption. Now, except for the petroleum graphs, the things I tell you are not predictions of the future. I'm only reporting facts and the results of some very simple arithmetic. But I do this with confidence that these facts, this arithmetic, and more important, our level of understanding of them will play a major role in shaping our future. Now, don't take what I've said blindly or uncritically because of the rhetoric or for any other reason Please, you check the facts. Please check my arithmetic. If you find errors, please let me know. But if you don't find errors, then I hope you'll take this very, very seriously. You are important people. You can think. And if there was ever a time when the human race needs people who will think, it's right now. It's our responsibility as citizens in a democracy to think. And so to be successful with this experiment of human life on Earth, we have to understand the laws of nature as we encounter them in the study of science and mathematics. We have to remember the message of this cartoon. Thinking is very upsetting. It tells us things we'd rather not know. We should remember the words of Galileo. He said, I do not feel obliged to believe that the same God who has endowed us with sense, reason, and intellect has intended us to forego their use. We should remember the words of Aldous Huxley. He observed that facts do not cease to exist because they're ignored. And we should remember H. L. Mencken's social philosophy. He believed that it was of the nature of the human species to reject what is true but unpleasant and to embrace what is obviously false, but comforting. And we should remember Eric Severide's law. He was a newscaster who made the transition from radio to television back in the 1950s. He observed that the chief source of problems is solutions. Now let's just look at an example. The Nile River for thousands of years would flood in the spring and the silt that was carried down by the river would be deposited on agricultural lands on the two sides of the river, and this renewed the fertility of the land. They had a sustainable agriculture for thousands of years. But now the flood was sign of a nuisance as you had cities develop along there, and the city people didn't like the floods, and then the city people needed electricity. So that was the problem. What was the solution? The high dam at Aswan. So now let's look at the problems caused by the solution. First of all, all the silt is carried down by the river, is deposited in the reservoir behind the dam. So this means the dam has a lifetime, maybe 100, 200 years. It certainly is not very long. So it'll be filled, and then there won't be the storage capacity that it was designed to have. The water that's let out from the dam today is very clear water. So this means all of the erosion patterns downstream have changed. It used to be deposit here, pick up there, and so on. Now it's pretty much just picking up because it starts out from the dam as clear water. Down at the delta in Alexandria, where the Nile enters the Mediterranean Sea, they're washing away agricultural land because it's no longer being deposited and the river is just washing it out into the Mediterranean. 
And it used to be the load of biological nutrients that were brought down in this river all the time supported a major fishery in the eastern Mediterranean. That fishery is in serious decline because the nutrients no longer reach there. And now, in order to have their agriculture, they've got to do irrigation. They've got to buy fertilizer. It takes energy to make the fertilizer, and it could easily be that some of the energy to make the fertilizer comes from the dam. And now there are lots of more agricultural workers wading barefoot in the irrigation ditches, and they're subject to a schistomiasis, which is a, some kind of a parasite that's carried by things in the water that can get through the skin. And if you're barefoot in the, in the water, why you can get this. Uh, everything went bad because of the solution to the problem. Nobody looked at what the problems would be caused by the solution. This is one of the most important things that we need to remember. Now, here's a challenge. Can you think of any problem on any scale, from microscopic to global, whose long-term solution is in any demonstrable way aided, assisted, or advanced by having larger populations at the local level, at the state level, the national level, or globally? Can you think of anything that will get better if we crowd more people into our communities, into our state, into our nation, or on this earth? Think about it. Will anything get better with increased population? And I like the words of the late Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. He said, unlike the plagues of the Dark Ages or contemporary diseases, which we do not yet understand, the modern plague of overpopulation is soluble by means we have discovered and with resources we possess. What is lacking is not sufficient knowledge of the solution, but universal consciousness of the gravity of the problem and the education of the billions who are its victims. And so I hope I've made a reasonable case for my opening statement that I believe the greatest shortcoming of the human race is our inability to understand this very simple arithmetic. So I thank you very, very much, and I'd be happy to answer questions.